Welcome to Wolf Fur Programming again, and today I want to make another video about Linux phones. I got some more programming content that I'm going to start talking about. But today, I want to take one more look at a Linux operating system that works on the OnePlus 6. In my case, the OnePlus 6T. This is Ubuntu Touch. And I have to say, between Posh, KDE Plasma, this is easily the most polished, I guess, because... Uh, Mark Shuttleworth, Shuttleberg, I'm getting the billionaires confused. The canonical, <laughs> the Ubuntu CEO had invested some money in it a few years back and it's actually still pretty nice. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Um, first thing you have to do is unlock it. I'm gonna move it away while I put in my passcode. And here we have the main screen. It works pretty good. So far, I've tested out calls and text, and they both work fine. Uh, we can try some music, which I actually like because the Pine phone is pretty garbage at playing music. You think we'd at least be able to do good MP3 playing on Linux phones, but it seems to be harder than it sounds. And this is some open source music, so I know it's safe to play on YouTube. Works fine. Interestingly, in Ubuntu, the way you want to close out an app is you want to do this, which is a gesture. Swipe left, and then it gives you a list of open apps. I'll open up one more um, so that we can, uh, if I can get out. I still haven't ma mastered the gesture, so typically you close it out like that. You can have multiple open at a time, although, as you can see, I'm still struggling to get them all figured out. For web browsers, we have something called Morph Browser. It looks pretty old, um, but it seems to to be doing okay. So we can go to YouTube. And we see this is the default YouTube page. I don't even have any history. We can show that sound works. And save with Liberty Mutual. Okay, who sat at my desk? Auto-rotation works. Full screen works. Oh! Oh my god. And, I mean, it's just gonna go fine, so it does look like we have some hardware acceleration. I'm on the latest release candidate of Ubuntu Touch for the OnePlus. So, in order to use Ubuntu, you need to downgrade to Android, Android 9, which I was on Android 10, 10, yeah. And then the, uh, there's actually an official Ubuntu Touch installer that will work. You just follow the directions. And um, it was pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. We got some basic apps here. Some things I don't like about it is it's got its own display server that apparently no one else uses. It's called like Mer. And that means you got to recompile every application to use it. And I don't see many apps in the App Store. You know, you you think there'd be like VLC and stuff like that, but everything needs to be um, recompiled, I guess. And I want to try compiling some KDE apps like uh, Index, the file, the file manager um, that's on the Plasma edition of the Pine phone works really good. It's a really nice file manager. I actually used it in Android. And this one's pretty good too, actually. All the, all the, really everything in here works really well. So far, um, restarting doesn't work very well. Like sometimes it kind of bricks up my phone and I have to hold the power button, the up and down buttons at the same time. I'm on the 6T. If you're on the 6, it might be a little different. <clears throat> But yeah, every, everything works really good. Let me show you the file manager. Where is it? File manager. It works fine. So there's that song I played. You can preview it. I was really surprised how well the camera worked. So somebody put a lot of work into this. You know, of course, pictures work. Um, gotta do permissions every time, it seems. Video works.
pretty much just like Android. So while this is Linux, it's using something called Helium or Helium. And basically what it does is Ubuntu wrote a uh, layer in between the Android Linux kernel, which has a bunch of vendor proprietary blobs compiled into it and the under underlying Linux operating system which is why it needs to run on top of Android 9 because nobody's gone through the work of porting it to Android 10. So basically underneath here, there's a kernel from Lineage OS and uh, then we just have Ubuntu that runs on top of it. But if you wanna get rid of Google on your phone, right now this, and I, I've only played with it for a couple hours today, but this seems like a pretty pretty awesome solution. It's, uh, it's Linux, and I haven't gotten Anbox or Wadroid to work. I really want to get Wadroid to work because I hear it runs amazing on the OnePlus 6. And then, you know, you've got the ultimate privacy phone, right? You've got all your Android apps containerized away. So if you need your banking app and all those apps that you need from an official phone operating system like Android, you can have it. And then you can just close the container out when you feel like you don't want anyone to watch you. It's not perfect, obviously there are those blobs, those old blobs, proprietary code running on here, but um, it's pretty close. And you know, those weren't, at least at the time, likely designed to spy on you. Maybe in the future they will be. So I don't, I don't, think, the, I don't think that Android layer should be what most phones run, but right now, until we get proper Linux phone support, this actually is probably the best solution out there, at least for the money. So usually you can find a used OnePlus 6 under $200 and you can throw Ubuntu Touch on there and bam, you've got a Linux phone, no Google garbage, no Amazon garbage, no Apple garbage. It's the privacy you, you would want from, a, you know, that you would normally get out of your computer. Let me know in the comments if anyone wants to see anything else from Ubuntu Touch running in the OnePlus 6. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Have a good day.